test test Hello, so there's going to be a flash update, getting things started, looking at the charts, making sure that you're not panicking or anything like that. Going to be looking at what's happening at the moment in the market. Might be a good time to buy, but uh, yet yeah, let's see. Um, still setting everything up, making sure you can see everything properly. making sure that you are not panicking. Do let me know how you're doing, if you're panicking, if you're buying the dip and so on. I did place a buy order for ETH, I think at $5,530. I did get into ETH at a fantastic price. I think it was $1,530 um, on Binance. Bought a little bit of ETH, just a little bit, just a little bit. And uh, yeah, so the targets that we've got, it's possible that we touch the $1,478 range. Um, but this is normal. We, I was talking about such a possible correction happening one or two live streams ago. Of course, it's if you're new to the cryptocurrency space, then such a correction definitely might come as a bit of a surprise. And if you're over leveraged in the space, that might be very difficult for you to um, get a grasp on what's happening when you're thinking that the whole cryptocurrency space is dumping. But if you look at the big picture, it's not too bad. So we had a massive dump all the way down to $1,505. For ETHUSD, if we look at BTC USD, it's actually all the way down to 46782 um, for, for 46,730 dollars. Um, yeah. Let me see that it's displaying correctly. Before I continue, do let me know where you're from, if you can hear and see me properly. This is, as I said, a very surprise live stream. I was actually setting up to make a video, but since the market started crashing, I had to act super fast. So yeah, and I think I'll just do my video here live as people are watching and we're monitoring the current state of the market. Fantastic opportunity that we had here um, to buy the dip. It's possible that it dips even lower, but at the moment I think this is pretty good. So the for BTC USD, we've got a support at 50,856. Now we retrace back to that. It's going to be interesting to see if this is actually going to be a resistance or um, support. So if we break past that, so that's that's going to be pretty interesting. Be Ruben, Belgium, started mining ETH a month ago and just saw all my favorite coin pairs drop on Binance. I mean, it's too expected if BTC and ETH drop, all the pairs are very often correlated with BTC uh, as well as ETH. So if BTC and ETH drop, then all the pairs are going to be dropping like a stone. But I think it's always important to look at larger time frames. So this is looking very, very bloody. But it looks pretty good, to be honest. So uh, my first target was hit. If we look at the ETH USD price. And I believe like if we look at the, the last rally, I've got my targets. I showed this on my live stream a few days ago where we could actually um, touch. And I think for me, it touched perfectly or uh, nearly a bit higher. At $1,548, I think I got a buy-in at $1,535 for ETH, but several ETH. And that is the 1.2.72. So that's pretty good. 
So I think if you're panicking at the moment, just close your charts. It's never a good time to sell when there's blood in the streets. That's often the best time to buy. If you bought the top, then just wait, just close your charts and don't look at them because it's definitely not the moment to sell. And definitely don't be led by your emotions because that's very often the worst way to trade. In the cryptocurrency mar market, the money moves from the impatient to the patient. This is something that you can write down. If you are starting to feel scared because you see some double digit losses on your portfolio, it's a time to deinstall your cryptocurrency portfolio because the markets have been over leveraged and very hot for the last few weeks without um, such a correction. But if you look at this here, on the grand scale of things, this little dip doesn't look too bad. But of course, if you started entering into um, ETH at 2000 US dollar level and now it drops down to 1663, it's understandable. Yeah, you're maybe sweating a little bit. Uh, you're looking at this guy, oh, sweating guy, GIF, this one here. Where did you? Yeah, you're looking a little bit like this guy here with the current situation of the market if you bought too much high. But if you if you sold um, at higher price points and you're looking to get in, this might be a good opportunity when the market dips pretty strongly. It's very often good opportunities to buy. Now, of course, this is not financial advice. The market can definitely um, go down a lot more, but it's very often better to buy at a discount uh, than, than to buy when it's um, going to, uh, than when it's going up. So in my opinion, the best way to do is to sell when it goes up, buy when it goes down. All right. So yeah, if you've been waiting for a dip, this is your chance. Um, very often these dips, they just got eaten up. Like as you can see at the moment, this is um, <laughs> being eating up brutally, which is fantastic. The bulls are fighting back massively against this dip. Um, so we're already back at $1,690 for ETH. And I wouldn't be surprised if this dip gets eaten up. It gets eaten up like lungs get wrecked in such dips, but um, all in all, they're very healthy for the market and something that was to be expected. Now, I'm not sure if it's over, no clue about that. Let's see how many people are tuning in. Do let me know if you've got any questions, what you're doing at the moment, what you're buying. If you're thinking about some buying some altcoins, maybe this is the opportunity for you. So if we look at the RSI, it's looking pretty good. There are some pretty good discounts at the moment in the market. So we've got ADA, USD, which dropped down to nearly 81 cents. Fantastic discount at the moment is trading at 95 cents. So you're definitely going to have these swings in the markets. I mean, look at this swing that we had here for other USD at a 34 cents level. So you can see it went to 39, down to 23, up to 40 and so on. So these things are what you can expect in the market and you have to play the game. You have to play this roller coaster. You have to accept these 20-30% dips in order to um, benefit from the 500-600-800% gains that you might get investing in the cryptocurrency space. But of course, if you just entered the market, this is the price you're going to have to pay emotionally um, and to get the gains. But yeah. Ruben, do you see any long-term change indicating a possible bear market? I do not see a possible change in a bear market at the moment. For a few reasons, you've got the stimulus checks that are going to have to come. Many people are selling at the moment because of tax refunds. There are institutions that entered into the cryptocurrency space. They're definitely not selling. You know how difficult it is for institutions to sell on the market. They cannot just go to Binance and click on sell. They have to do all these OTC trades and so on. With all of the like the conferences that Michael Saylor did with massive institutions trying to enter in the space, they're definitely not selling at the moment. 
at the moment what's happening is that you're going to have a lot of weak hands entering uh, leaving the space now of course nothing against people that are taking profits that's definitely fantastic if you're already up 10x 20x taking a little bit of profits but for those that are in the space for a longer period of time do not be shaken out by such movements because you feel like a sucker afterwards and that's not just to keep you in the market that's just to protect you because it's better to start selling when you feel like selling not for some emotional uh, reasons physics markets are dumping from michael Saylor. the people want him to buy cheap bitcoin exactly that's that's the reason why it's buying they want uh, they want him to get some super cheap bitcoin Shall we really look at some other coins? If we look at CoinGecko, um, Binance is already, um, Bitcoin is already back to 51,000. ETH is back to $1,701. So this is the, 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 the super fast cheap money that I made today buying at $1,530. Made a few, uh, made quite, a, I don't know how much, but I made a few hundred dollars um in in uh profits just by buying this dip super fast it, it, i think the dip was literally just a few minutes maybe five or ten minutes max so if we look at uh, on on this, this is crazy it's already a thousand seven hundred dollars i know this is crazy so if we look at the five minute mark it's it's basically i had five minutes time to log in put all my security information into binance and i bought uh 1415 um bought some some crypto at thousand five hundred and thirty five dollars yeah thousand five hundred and thirty five and we're already back at thousand seven hundred and nineteen John Regulacion what's the next move of BTC well very difficult I mean I cannot tell you for certain since I do not have a crystal ball but what I know for sure is that yeah, there's a lot of people entering the market, institutions are entering to the market, you're going to have stimulus checks, a lot of money printing that's happening. I think you have to look at it from the, this perspective, having cash out on hand is becoming less and less of something that people want to do, especially institutions, they don't really want to have cash and are looking for assets to invest in. And of course, at the moment, um, the stock market is looking overly overly extended so i do not think uh, that we're going entering into a bear market anytime soon it's possible we can enter into a slight corrective phase that can span over a few weeks often what can happen is you have uh, a bit of a dead cat bounce where the market goes back up and retests uh, resistance so at the moment for eve it's possible that it goes back up to 1,878 and it comes back down and retests the levels of maybe 1,470 or even 1,380. That's possible. To be honest, I don't try and time the markets. I do not try and sell. I just buy when there's a dip and sell at fixed price points. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. That's a super easy way to make money. You set some price points, $2,000. Three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. You sell a bit there, and then you've always got some liquidity on hand to buy the dip. Should that be ETH or BTC? So let's look at BTC USD, and we're already back at fifty-two thousand four hundred eighty-eight for BTC USD on the five-minute price chart. Dipped all the way down to forty-seven thousand. So actually, I was making a video, and I was expecting a price to reach this level, and that's because of a very, very easy rule of nature to use, and that is the Fibonacci rule. And let me show you that. So the last tip that we had brought us back down to the 29,000 US dollar range. So if you take the Fibonacci retracement, what is that here? And you put it up. 0 0.382, perfect, perfect touch, 47,498. Looks like everyone was 10x long, massive carnage. Yes, definitely people are overextended, especially 
any any region like 49k 50k um if they went 10x long it's possible that they got wrecked unless they sold at the 58,000 US dollar range i mean 10x 10x long you don't really have a lot of leeway for a correction so yeah it's you, you shouldn't feel too bad. I mean, people have to understand the risk of going long. I mean, the easiest thing is just to go 1x long. That's basically just buying and then holding. Then you never get liquidated. But yeah, people do want to um, have a lot more of exposure to the space. And that's why... Um, yeah, that's why they're um, going so much long. Yeah. All right, 58 viewers in the in the chat. Do make sure that you uh, <laughs> leave a like, leave a like, support the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. I make um, weekly videos, but maybe soon I'll be doing daily videos if I've got the time and also depending on how much demand there is for it. Talking about news around in, in the cryptocurrency space. So uh, with the price charts out of the way, let me talk about the current news. This is something that was actually preparing for today's video, but since I jumped on the live stream, I'll probably just be talking about that now and then upload it later on. So the cryptocurrency market lost 70 billion US dollars as Bitcoin drops below 56K, actually lost way more than that, probably around 100 billion US dollars as it dropped to 47K, but now it retraced back to 52,000 US dollars, which is something to be expected based on the Fibonacci um, levels support levels as i showed on the the btc usd price now 50 47 000 was a very strong support level and as you can see we've got a very large wick here which indicates very strong buying pressure which also indicates that people have a lot of belief in the price going even further since a lot of wicks below a candle shows that people believe in the strong fundamentals and the market is not ready to go down lower now of course just from one candle we cannot determine how the price is going to move we're going to have to see if the next candle is going to um, move higher and close above the previous candle that's going to have have to be something that we figure out in the next few days now of course if in the next few days the the price dumps even further then we have to go and look at what the next price levels would be so the next one that would act as a support would be 43,000 and then even lower would be 40,506 dollars for BTC USD and you have to see here if we manage to bounce above the previous top which is 40,000, 40, this is still bullish territory. So even if we drop to the 40, 41,000 US dollar level, well, it's still bullish and we manage. So if you're looking for some cheap buys, place some buy orders all the way down to 40,000 US dollar level and you might get some cheap buys for BTC USD. If we look at ETH USD levels, um, it's it's looking also super bullish. I'm not really sure if we're going to drop as much, but we never know. Never say never. Um, let me actually chart that out for you. Now, this is not forecasting the future. This is just basically using simple math and um, the rule of nature. And also, since a lot of traders like to use these indicators very often, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if we look at it here, I make this a bit bigger because this is now at the moment a size for ants. All right, so that would be the next level for us to look at. 1,518, that was a very strong support. So it's a bit bigger, sorry about that. All right, $1,517 was a very strong support. Now, should we drop lower? We've got this upwards support line, this trend line, which will act as a very strong support. Should we manage to touch that? That would bring us down to the $1,324 level. So I don't think we're anywhere bearish, even if we drop down to those levels. I definitely do not hope that this happens. What I hope is for uh, a pullback 
breaking past this $1,870 level, that would be super bullish. And then we can look forward to breaching um, the next um, the next levels, which be around $2,200 US dollar. So let's have a look at ADA USD. ADA USD has also had a fantastic retracement and a very strong dip down to the 80 cents level. This is pretty good. So if we look at the same support levels as we did with BTC and ETH USD, that would actually show, and as you can see, it matches up nearly perfectly, um, a bit higher than the 0 0.5, but let me see. So now we are at the 0 0.236 level. It dropped below the 87 and between the, the 382 and the 0 0.5. So in my opinion, we have still got a lot of bullish action thanks to this, this massive wick. That means a lot of buying power happening for Cardano. So any, so if you bought any anywhere before um, 72 cents, you shouldn't really be worried about anything in my opinion, as this is going to act as a very strong support. So here, the 72 cents level, and I also think what's going to be acting as a strong support is this 95, since that was previously a resistance. So hope hope this wasn't too much of an information overload. What I'm basically trying to tell you is do not panic, do not try and sell at the moment, anticipating that the market is going to crash even further, because that's the best way that you get wrecked in such a market. Like Warren Buffett likes to say, the money moves from those that are impatient to those that are patient. When there's blood in the streets, that's when you should actually be buying and uh, accumulating. Now, of course, do not buy more than you're willing to lose. Even though many people like to say um, buying a, a dip is like catching a, a falling knife. Understand this concept. You just have to realize that when buying a dip, you have to expect that the, the price can even fall a lot lower. So I'm not seeing enough likes on this video. Definitely smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, don't subscribe if you don't like money. Basically that. Don't subscribe if you don't like money. I bring you free information so that you can make the best possible decisions in the market. I'm not giving financial advice, but I'm helping you think for yourself in the market in terms of investment and what kind of um, platforms you can use, be that um, trading, be that using uh, DeFi apps and so on. So if you're new, definitely subscribe. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot of fantastic videos coming out soon. So Binance Smart Chain videos coming soon. Um, complete beginner's guide to DeFi space, how you can get involved as well as participate in like super, super lucrative investments that are not possible for people like trading on Binance or KuCoin and so on. So that is one video that's coming out soon. Let me look at the chat. Uh, John, your video was nice. Thanks a lot. This is when you buy. This is financial advice. <laughs> I'm just seeing it so I don't get sued, the fixers. Um, but yeah. Uh, Spoken video UK, you are the only YouTube reader covering this um, a lot. It says a lot to who's, who's genuine. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate the feedback. I try and bring you videos without the hype, without fud. I just bring you the information as it is without um, sugarcoating anything so that you can make the best possible decisions. Who's here? Big dogs have the squeeze play down to a size, tricking all the noobs and milking the market of every penny. Definitely, definitely. If I had money and if I were an, an ethical person, it would be super easy to manipulate the market. If you want an easy way that it's done, it's basically you open up a short position on one exchange, you sell maybe um, five or 10 million USD in Bitcoin, and then you profit from a lot of liquidations happening. And then you place your buy orders um, below where you believe that the other have their um, stop losses. So it's a really easy way to manipulate the market. And since the market is so small, it's it's just like a child's game. Me personally, I don't really play too much with, with leverage. Sometimes I do it for fun, but not more than 3x leverage, uh, because that's something, yeah, it's, it's basically gambling if you don't really know what you're doing. If you're not familiar with technical analysis, um, then then leverage trading is gambling. Definitely do not go more than, than, than 10x. I mean, even 10x is super risky. 
The Maltese Egil Zozo. If you have money, will you buy Cardano now or wait? Me personally, I'm super bullish on the Cardano project. I really like the fact that you can stay, can make some passive income. I've been accumulating Cardano back since two cents. You have to see it from my point of view. Me personally, I'll be continuing to accumulate, um, especially with some dips. But that is also because I've got a very, very low buying price. So you have to look what works for you it's definitely a lot better to buy when it's just dipped because you get a bit of a discount and the chance that it dips even further is a lot lower than when the price is going parabolic now historically it's better to buy when it dumps and when it's going up yeah and marce you do the cardano family yeah, i'm part of the cardano family i've been buying ada since two cents being state i bought cardano back in 2017 i rode the wave up so a bit but now i've been accumulating four or five cents and i've been uh, staking that and uh, really really um looking forward to what cardano is bringing out um, in this year is a lot of fantastic stuff now, me personally, I'm not a maxi, and the type I like, I really like all most cryptocurrencies like BTC, ETH, Cardano, Polkadot, and so on. I'm a big fan of the Ethereum ecosystem, despite the flaws at the moment. But I do see that the whole cryptocurrency space, DeFi space, has a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of place for all types of technology. I think all of them will work together in one way or another. It's not going to be one dominating the whole space. Pixius, open the free X trade. I think 10x or more is great, especially with the current funding rates. Definitely. What I think is a shame is sometimes I cannot even open uh, a long position or short position since there's no funds available to go into a, a, a long. So I was trying to short dodge at some point. I know it would have been really stupid, but um, there was just no liquidity available. Sometimes even going long in the last few days was not possible because there was just no um, liquidity available. And Master, what's more likely in your opinion to hit uh, 0.1 USD equal one ADA or ADA $2? In my opinion, $2 ADA. With, with the stuff that's going on at the moment, it's it's more likely that, that Cardano is going to go to $2 than, than go to $0.10. Cents. But me personally, I wouldn't really mind it going to $0.10 cents because that means I could buy more. Um, but I know uh, in my, I don't think it's, it's going to go to $0.10. Cents anytime soon who's your crypto gonna sit on my sailboat in my underwear with 10 monitors going pump the shit out of this not they wouldn't getting a uh, doggy dog out there <laughs> awesome awesome yeah breaking dogmas it is time to buy more btc if other weak ones will sell why strong will buy which one are you well i guess that everyone has to make that decision for their selves uh, Mrs. Cerati, what do you think about XRP Ripple? I think at the moment it's very difficult to say what the outcome is going to be for the Ripple SEC um, lawsuit. There are many things and information out there. It's very difficult to gauge what is really going to happen. On one end, you can try and bet that if the, the SEC decides that XRP is a digital asset and not a security, then the price will skyrocket. On the other hand, if they decide that um, XRP is a security, then the price will plummet. Me personally, I don't really want to go into that risk because for me, that's a fundamentally um, high risk on what's going to happen. Me personally, I prefer to put my money into projects where I can support the fundamentals at the moment. For me, um, Ripple and XRP just do not match uh, Yeah, the, the good fundamental level that I need to invest in. And Marcel, how long will this dip? How long will this dip uh, continue in their pit in recent besides the correction? It's it's possible that what happens is we move a bit sideways. So let's go back to, to ETH USD or BTC. Let's look at BTC USD because the whole market is very often correlating uh, with BTC, meaning that if BTC moves up or down, the whole market will correct with BTC and very often they'll lose more in value um, towards BTC. So let's look at Coinbase. Um, in my opinion, 
it's possible that we have a similar correction to and and time of correction so it's possible that for for btc usd that the correction is not over it's possible don't really know the likelihood is that we might touch 42,000 and the length of the correction would be the similar thing that we saw on the 8th of January 21. So if we look at that date range, that would be from the 8th of January to, um, basically 19th of January. So that was a correction that we had, um, back from the 8th of January to 29th of January for BTC. So that would mean that this correction for BTC would also be um, from from the 21st, uh, 22nd of February to the 13th of March. Now that's just a, a guesstimate based on past price action, not for sure. It might be positive for the rest of the cryptocurrency space because when BTC goes down or sideways, then very often the altcoins can thrive. Astor Malori, thanks. I really appreciate the donation. And what do you think the support for ETH and BTC is? So what I really like to do is I already showed this, but I'll show it again because it doesn't really matter. Um, I like to use this FIB retracement. Basically you take this FIB tool on TradingView. TradingView is a free tool that you can use to estimate support lines. So you just take it, take the bottom of the last rally pull it all the way to the top and that would actually place. So if we take this rally, because that's the important, this bottom and to the top, that would place the support at uh, $46,788. You can place some buys there. You can also place some buys between basically 47,000 or even, even 48,000, depending on how much you want to buy. And this is 0.618. This is a very strong support and that would be at 40,000. So you can probably place ladder buys, so limit orders between uh, 40,000 and, and 47,000. You can also do like um, weighted limit orders. Basically, the more the price falls, the more you buy. So that, that's basically for, for BTC USD between uh, 40,000 and 47,000. And for EFUSD, I already did that. It's it's basically anywhere between the current price, depending on, on how much you've already bought and, and what your um, goals are. If you don't really mind that it doesn't touch these price levels, then you can um, play it safe and expect a, a, a drop. Then you can place probably at between 1,524 and 1,144, you might place some price limit orders here, but it's to be expected that it doesn't touch these levels. That's always the risk to take with limit orders. Thanks a lot for the donation. Really appreciate that, Mackie. Really appreciate your support, guys. What's even more fantastic, if you want the price to go up, you have to smash that like button. The like button is correlated with the price of ETH and USD so, uh, and BTC USD. So if you really want the, the, the price of those assets to go up, you have to smash that like button, make it um, go up. All right. Who's your crypto brother? Watch your charts, brother. Monday power is starting right now across the board. Uh, what's crazy? BTT has been one of my best coins this year. Made a killing off <laughs> this is going. Um, when uh, have we started the bull market in the middle or the end? Um, to be honest, actually, the bull market actually started um, back in 2020 at the beginning. So that's when we had the last lows. That was the, the, the beginning of, of the, the, this bull cycle. So we I would say we're like one third of the way there. Because I don't think the market will allow us to dump up back like we had from 42K back in January, simply because everyone would be expecting it. Now I don't think the market is that kind. 
it's it's very difficult to anticipate what the market is going to do um ours try and um, place and limit orders where I think the market might go, but it's also possible that my limit orders never get fulfilled. Yeah, that's uh, that's it, that's it. So let's... All right, so let's quickly go back to some some news that I've uh, wanted to cover in today's video, but uh, I'll just be covering it in the current live stream. So that is um, Tesla made one billion on its Bitcoin profits, probably a little bit less now after the correction, but this is already incredible. Tesla has made roughly one billion in the aftermath of its one point five billion dollar investment which is really crazy now it's probably more likely 800 million or 700 million now after the current correction so imagine you've got a portfolio and you refresh your app you've got like 1.1 billion dollars in profit and then you refresh your app after this uh low dump and then you've only got 700 million 300 million wiped out so yeah that's it goldman sachs and gp morgan reportedly buying another um, cryptocurrency or not exactly the cryptocurrency but something like a synthetic asset that allows them exposure to a cryptocurrency and it's not bitcoin or ethereum now you might be wondering which cryptocurrency it is there are a few other ones and i think it's pretty interesting which ones they're actually um, looking at and the one that they actually um, bought and is interesting financial titans goldman sachs gp morgan and UB ubs brokerage firm are all exposing themselves to an exchange traded product that's like a fancy word for uh, an etf and it's tied to polka dots native asset dot so basically in uh sentence they're buying some dot they're not actually buying the cryptocurrency they're just buying something that tracks the, the price of the cryptocurrency because of some types of regulations and so on um, Ethereum mining's monthly re revenue reached its all time high over 1 billion US dollars in February. This is actually pretty interesting because a lot of people were like wondering if Ethereum is going to suffer due to the extremely high fees at the moment. And in my opinion, it's not going to suffer. The only people that are suffering from the extremely high fees on the Ethereum blockchain are retail investors because they cannot lock up their $100 or $200 into different um, interest bearing. Uh, applications like Aave compound without having to pay like super high fees however those that are rich in at the moment they can benefit from the space and it to be honest don't, don't really care too much about paying $50 or $100 in smart contract fees when they're locking up 200k USD and earning 8% or 10% interest so $541 million in the form of transaction fees, and that's pretty, pretty high. Ethereum minor revenue, as you can see, is incredibly high. So that's that's interesting. Uh, there are some updates happening to the Ethereum um, blockchain this year with the Berlin hard fork. So I'll be making a video about that, showing that as well as the path of Ethereum 2.0, as there's been some um changes to to what's happening with ethereum 2.0 very interesting stefan meyer do you think ada can hit the 10 dollar mark it's it's always difficult with these estimations if to put it simply i'm not going to be selling my my uh cardano or all of my cardano before 10 dollars um i do believe that 10 dollars is possible um yeah Imran, I'm disappointed I didn't buy additional Ethereum at $1,640. Yes, well, earlier today, well, it's always difficult. You had to be super fast. I think the dip only lasted five minutes. Astro Malori, Emma, I was thinking about that today. The more you make in crypto, the more you lose in dumps and the father's rule. Yeah, true, true. But the great thing, or you have to think it like this. If you're like a super large institution, you've got several million dollars in E for BTC, you cannot just go on to Binance or, or, or Kraken or uh, Gemini or Bitstamp and just press the sell or market sell. You have to go OTCs over the counter. So it's very difficult as an institution to just sell, which is a bit of an insurance. You cannot just listen to your emotions and, and job. 
come on guys hit the like button very very much appreciated miss charadi hope that's a, a miss uh yeah definitely hit the like buttons make the price go up make my channel blow up as uh i'll be soon creating a lot more content for you guys free content free content making sure that you get the best possible information in the space don't subscribe if you don't like money yeah subscribe if you want to get some information on on how to use different DeFi platforms um yeah there's not enough likes definitely leave some more likes definitely leave some more likes Ari what do you think about that and or reef I did a video about reef I do like the idea the only thing at the moment I don't like about reef is they are shilling the coin way too much at the moment. I'm not sure if that's bots or if that's actual people that are shilling and they've bought some um, influencers to show the coin as well as a lot of Reddit bots. So I think in my opinion, that is a bit of a red flag for me. Uh, there are a few other things about supply that I'm not too happy at the moment with Reef. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit on the fence at the moment. How many BTC, ETH and other coins you hold? Stefan Meyer is asking. Well, I wish I'd have a lot more than I do. That's all I can say. <laughs> I always wish I had bought more. I always wish I had bought more. P Mac, who's buying Super Farm? I know someone that actually bought some Super Farm. At the moment, I'm not um, buying too many shit coins at the moment. Fixus, if you want 1000x more views, uh, you got to do those stupid uh, open mouth thumbnails. Yeah, I know. I'm just, oh man, I really hate those thumbnails, those porn face thumbnails. I mean, if I'd want to do that, I'd have created that OnlyFans account already uh, ages ago. And clickbait. Yeah, I have to learn to do more clickbait. I'm always scared of, of, of scaring my subscribers away with like too much clickbait content. But maybe I have to increase, increase the clickbait a little bit more. Um, I think even on tech does it pretty well. And I think Coin, Coin Bureau is also really good at doing like clickbait stuff, but still delivering on it. And then, even on tech is fantastic. Like pump it, pump it. So let me quickly back, look at the charts and see if we're missing anything. Let's look at the four hour. Ooh, a lovely week, lovely week. I really love such a week. Like wicks like these make a lot of money. A lot of money indeed. Peter, Peter, a few minutes ago it was a great move to buy BNB for 240 might be best long term only. I, yeah, BNB has been a fantastic investment. I mentioned BNB back in um, on the 31st of December, it was one of my coins that I did a prediction about five coins for incredible wealth in 2020. And my price prediction for BNB for 2021 was only $100. So it, it did like nearly a free X from, from that. So definitely incredible. So yeah, I think, I think BNB is going to go up by a lot, especially thanks to the Binance Smart Chain. Um, I'll, I'll open up other chat in a bit. Let me see, where do I have, ah, da, ah, da, ah, da, ah, da. no, that's XRP, why do I have XRP? Um, let's have a look at the USD. Pretty incredible, pretty incredible. That's beautiful, beautiful. To be honest, this is, this is way better than Pornhub. This is, this is way better than Pornhub. I mean, like, People don't really have to go into Pornhub to get, uh, you know, you get these massive red dildos on trading you day in, day night. What what can you ask for more? I think Ada is looking incredibly bullish at the moment. Incredibly bullish. Now, what would be incredibly bullish if um, Ada managed to close this 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 candle in the green? That would be incredibly bullish because that would be like a super super um massive wick so if we look at the the price at the moment 
how much price change happened. So let me make this bigger. Make me bigger. Um, so if we look at the price change today was minus 24%, minus 24% from the current price is minus 20%. So people that managed to buy somewhere here already 20% 20, 20 plus. So that's why I always recommend buying the dip and that's because very often the dips get corrected and then you're in, in more or less in the safe zone, a really good safe zone. So this is looking really good. This is looking really good for, for Cardano. And the, the strong support level is probably this 95 cents range. And if we manage to stay above $1, that's even fun, even better because $1 is probably the, the, the psychological level. And yeah, I mean, personally, I think, I think Cardano has fantastic fundamentals, so I don't really look too much at the technical analysis side of things. I'm, I'm, I'm invested long term. The same with ETH. And the reason for these market corrections is because you've got like something that's called the true value. And the there's a lot of exuberance in the market. So the price goes massively higher. And you're going to have to have some profit taking that's happening. That's why you're going to have a price dump. And then to to, to top all of that off, you've got these people that have some massive leverage positions, they're over leveraged and you've got people that want to manipulate the market a little bit, get some profit and so on. So that's why you're gonna have these massive swings, market corrections, and it's normal, completely normal in the market. You get these over and over again. So as you can see here with Cardano, very similar occurrence happened back on the 15th of February and it just corrected. Like you had like a really beautiful pullback. I remember buying um, back here. And as you can see, buying at these lows, it's always like one of the best possibility to make a killing. It's not always great. For example, in a bear market, this is not going to work that well. But in a bull market, that's the way that you should actually try and time your trades, put some money aside for when you're going to have such corrections and then place your buy order. So this would have been a really fantastic buy. I went into ETH and that was a fantastic buy for me. Fahad, Fahad Jedi, what do you think about Monero? It's low now. Um, I think Monero is great. Um, it's just me personally, I'm not invested in it. That's it. It's it's at the support level, um, two hundred and eleven dollars. So so that's pretty cool. I think should it go back up, it should it has to definitely hold this support level of two hundred and twelve dollars. It dropped pretty low, um, yeah. But me personally, I'm not too invested in Monero. I think it's a great project, but yeah, it's not like a foundation for the DeFi space or something like big. It's 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 a great. It's got a great use case, but it's not more than that. So me personally, I don't really see it as an investment opportunity for me personally. Um, I, I've got other uh, uh, other assets I'm invested in. BNB, let's look at BNB at the moment. I bought some BNB. Um, BNB is looking really bullish. It's definitely had a massive rise. So it's 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 a bit of a hot one now to, to buy like a lot of BNB now. It's possible that it corrects, but it's possible that it has another leg up because of the Binance Smart Chain. So here you've got one leg up, two legs up. So it's possible that we have a similar move that we had here. That was bring us to four hundred and eighty dollars. Astro Mallory, do you think Egold is done or due for another run? I think Egold pumped quite a lot. 
um, recently. Um, but it's definitely had quite a bit of a correction, like massive run. As you can see, like a massive run um, since 15th of November 2020, that's an incredible rally. And it's a bit of a hot one just to enter right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, a bit of a hot one. I'm, I'm not invested in eGOAT at the moment. Stefan Meyer, if I hold, for example, 200,000 ADA, should I sell all my ADA at $10 or just 50,000 coins and hold the rest? What do you suggest? I think you should watch my um, when to take profit video because I think there I, I show a very good strategy on how to take profit without selling all of your coins. So if you go into YouTube, um, it's, it's this video here, how to take profit on crypto. I recommend everyone watch it. And it's by setting different, different levels and sell orders. So you get, you, you set different prices when you want to sell and then you sell at those prices. So for example, you can start selling a little bit, like maybe 5% or 10% at $5, then 10% at $6, $7, $8, $9, $10. $10. So for example, you could maybe, um, you say onto $10, you'd like to sell 30% of your position and then you like ladder sell from a certain price, like $5 up to $10. And then you keep the, the vast majority of your coins long-term staking and earning 5%. Because I think the staking rewards are fantastic for Cardano and you can uh, get, earn some pretty fantastic passive income. And by selling at different levels, you're gonna manage and buy the dips, should there be dips, yeah. Um. Pretty awesome. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of fantastic videos coming up. I definitely do not want to miss. I'm also doing um, giveaways, um, Ledger Nano S, in three of my upcoming videos. So you definitely do not want to miss that. Jared Thompson, yeah, BNB is a solid centralized crypto. I agree with you, but Binance is one of the biggest exchanges around. It really depends if you want to make money or not. Sometimes you buy some coins because they make money, not because um, you believe in the project. But in my opinion, for a centralized exchange, Binance is one of the best. I don't, I'm not a fan of the Binance Smart Chain, but Binance as a centralized exchange, I do like it. You're not a true Bitcoin OG unless you bought Denta coin. I bought Denta coin. I also bought Pack coin. I bought Bitdegree. I bought a lot of shit coins back in 2000, 2017 and 18. I bought Vert coin. I bought so much crap back in, 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 in 2017. Actually, my first BTC that I bought it was at $250. Explode there, what coins are you looking at right now? Uh, I've got my eyes, uh, basically the, the top ones at the moment, Eve, um, Eve, BDC, Dot, Ada, um, Phantom, um, different, different um, chain link competitors, yeah. Litecoin, I think Litecoin is pretty good. I held a lot, a lot of Litecoin back in, um, 2017 at the moment I don't hold Litecoin but I do see it's got a lot of potential especially since um, Bitcoin transactions are pretty high so now it's at $205 I'm actually super impressed that it managed to reach such price levels pretty good investment indeed $25 in March 2020 I think um, so Litecoin does have definitely quite a bit of room to grow. The the peak was was oh crazy it was four hundred nine dollars back in 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 two thousand and seventeen. 
So it's definitely got quite a bit of room to grow. The next target for Litecoin is probably going to be $251 and afterwards $299 um, and see where it goes from then. I'm not too up to date on what kind of improvements they already brought. I believe like Mimble Wimble um, and some new types of consensus algorithm was brought to Litecoin, but I'm not too familiar about that. Packwing, or, uh, wait, I think someone asked about an exchange, exchange. Um, what, 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 what is the best exchange? Ah, what's the best trading platform in Europe with the lowest, um, lowest fees? I, I really like Bitpanda Pro. They just don't have that many trading pairs. Um, Kraken is also pretty good, but I, I think they've got Euro. Yeah, yeah, Euro, they've got um, Euro. Um, account so you can trade with euro they've not got the best liquidity but i do recommend um i, I recommend buying crypto on either bitpanda or or kraken using the the pro interface because you got much lower trading fees so bitpanda pro i think it's only 0.1 percent if you buy i'm um, using the bitpanda pro and then you can always move it to binance i really like trading on binance Um, step my unfortunately staking in Germany is not the best way because the tax the holding time is extended after staking on 10 years without staking just one year oh that's crazy I feel sorry for you luckily here in Switzerland we don't really have any um, special stuff for staking it's it's basically um, calculated as a vermögen Jalo, at a price prediction, yeah, I think $10 is possible. I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year. I think this year, $8, like 6 to $8. Yeah. Oh, Synthetics. Synthetics is pretty cool. James Bradley. Um, I think it's going to grow with the DeFi space. The only problem is when BTC drops, it's it's going to suffer quite a bit um, because um, a lot of the things are correlated with with uh, with BTC. So the DeFi space, many of the, the DeFi projects suffer when BTC drops. When BTC is going sideways, that's when they, they, they can actually thrive. So if you've got the DeFi summer back in, in um, 2020, like June, July, August, that's when most of the DeFi projects went up massively and i think synthetics got a lot of stuff that they're um, developing they also i believe they implemented their uh, optimistic ethereum which should reduce the trading fees but at the moment like with all DeFi apps the trading fees are just like crazy so yeah as synthetics went up quite a bit um since december from four dollars to twenty dollars it's one of the videos that i did um back in June 2020, um, I think I think it was like uh, Kim, DeFi coins. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which one it was. I mean, this one was was pretty good. They've got BNB, ADA, BTC, ETH, and I believe. Polka dot, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, as coins, Aave is also doing pretty well as a coin. Price prediction for synthetics, probably another 5x from here on out, um, at least. That's because this, the, the derivatives market is like crazy, crazy at the moment. Stefan Meyer, which languages do you speak? Uh, I speak English, French, German, Italian, and a little bit of Chinese. <laughs> and and for German, we've got like High German and Swiss German because here in Switzerland we speak Swiss German. Neil Cockrell. So you just don't. Why did everything drop an hour ago? 
just market correction, nothing sh like out of the normal for, for the cryptocurrency space. The markets always need, need a bit of a correction in order to find the best, the, the real value of, of different assets. People buy, people sell. It's just a normal way that the market works. And as you can see, this, this dip has been eaten up by bulls. As long as we're in the bull market, everything's looking good. Let's look at the Ichimoku cloud. So you might not have already, maybe you might, if you're like a, a regular to the channel, I use the Ichimoku cloud very often. It looks complicated, but it's actually really, really easy to use. You've got this blue cloud, which signals that we are in a bull market. And as long as the price is above the cloud, it's bullish. And here, these lines here act as um, support lines. So as you can see here, we just like barely touched this support line for BTC USD at 47,000. And it's, it's very, very easy tool to use. I've got a few videos on how to use the the Ichimoku cloud. And I think it's very easy to use a way to actually show when you're in a bull market. Um, yeah. And basically when you're in the bull market, you always trade with the market. So you always go long and never short unless you go underneath. So if you look at that, we actually started as soon as we went above the cloud. So the bull run actually started here, um, back in April, 2020. And now we're still, in the full, full move of the bull run. Neil Cochrane, sorry, new to this, what is a correction? So if you, if you look at the cryptocurrency market, basically each candle represents some price finding between buyers and sellers. And sometimes there are a lot more set, a lot more buyers and sellers. So the price goes up and sometimes there's more sellers than buyers. So the price goes down. So if you look at the, the market, the market just doesn't go up like this it actually goes up in a zigzag as sometimes, as I said, there are more sellers or there are more buyers. So if you look at the, the current market, as you can see, the price sometimes just goes up, but then you've got a little bit of a correction. So the correction basically means that you've got a little bit more sellers currently in the market. So the price goes down until there's more buyers to prop up the price because they think, okay, at the moment, the fair value of the price is, for example, 16,943, and then the price goes back up and then it sells. So you, you always get these, these move upwards and with a move upwards, you're gonna have a bit of a correction where people start taking profit and new buyers enter the market or people that believe this is a fair value, they start buying more and then the price continues going up. So, so basically you, you distinguish between move up and then correction, move up, correction and a dump is like a very, very strong correction. And, and basically this is something that's very healthy in the market as you don't want something to just go up constantly. Yeah. Bank chamber, when a new token gets launched on EVE, do you have to keep refreshing the Uniswap page or will it auto populate itself? It should auto populate itself. Um, I, I think the only danger that you've got is that there are many Uniswap bots that will snipe new coins. Um, they, they actually track the Uniswap page for, for new listed coins. So auto refreshing the page yourself, it's, it's going to be really tough. And then you're going to have to have like massive gas wars to be able to enter. So, so that's going to be a, a bit of a danger, possibly wait like a few hours before entering. Yeah. Paulus Shapaka, hey there, what advice can you give to those who just started, which kind to start with? Start with like the top 10 coins. I mean, BTC, ETH, um, Cardano, XLM, you can't really go wrong. Polkadot, those are pretty good, but try and research about what the coins do and why they're important. And that will help you like, they grounded when the price corrects. Steady star, where should I put a stop loss on for EVE? I don't have a stop loss. Um, I mean, 
if you have to ask where to place a stop loss, you, sh you probably shouldn't be leveraged trading. Um, leverage trading is, is dangerous. You get wrecked really fast. Um, yeah. If, if price prediction this year, yeah, I think, I think, um, I think for 3,500 to $4,000 sometime June, July this year, and probably somewhere around seven to 8K at the end of the year. Eric, look at the Kraken chart on Ada and Eve um, drop 80%. Yeah, as I mentioned before, Kraken doesn't have the best liquidity. So uh, let me see if USD Kraken are <laughs> pretty crazy. <laughs> Oh my God, I should have placed some buy orders there that, you know, some people like just double their money, 2x their money. So this this is like a good example of why to place some some uh, some limit orders. You might have gotten lucky and, and bought some E for $728, really crazy. What about Bit, Bitpanda? I'm really running because they also don't have like the best liquidity. Um, is there no Bitpanda here? Hmm, it's not going to be Panda, strange. What about uh, the USD Kraken? <laughs> Oy, that, someone made like massive amounts of cra cash. Crazy wick, crazy wick, crazy wick. I must say, some people got like extremely lucky with this wick. And this wick is probably like a five minute wick or something like that. Look, like just crazy wick. Went all the way down to 15, 15 cents. And that's possibly also due to some liquidations, due to no liquidity. Someone just dumped like a massive amount, massive amount. Someone got lucky and just like six x his coins in the matter of, of, of a few seconds. So it went all the way down to 15.5, looks like crazy. Stefan Meyer, what do you think about XRP right now with the SEC lawsuit? It's it's really um, not something that I have much knowledge about. I just know what uh, the, the SEC said, uh, the, the XRP community said, some lawyers say there's not a lot of clarity in what's actually going to happen for me. The fundamentals are just not there to invest in XRP. It might be a bit of a of a gamble to see and, and buy now at those prices. Um, you might get lucky and the SEC, loss, the SEC just says, all right, XRP is a digital asset. But you have to take into consideration that by doing that, you're actually um, taking money away from projects that could actually 2x, 5x and so on during the spool run. So it's it's like a bit of a of a gamble and and missed opportunity with your money by not investing in other projects. So for me, it's a, it's a pass on, on XRP at the moment. Um, yeah. Fundamentally, it's just not up to par with other other projects. What's your opinion on Kuzama? It did not shake out like Eve dot and so on. Do you think this has a specific reason? Yes, probably because the Kuzama network. It works very similar to DOT. Many of the Kuzama tokens are probably locked up uh, and not on the market for sale. So probably with, I believe the power chains, they have to like borrow, uh, uh, they have to buy Kuzama tokens in order to run the power chain and they have to hold it. They don't sell based on the price. So that's probably one reason why the Kuzama price held so strong. Eric got some ADA at 83 cents. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, at 83, that's, that's pretty good gains at the current price. If it goes higher um, in the next few days, then that's a very good uh, discount that you got. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Give me just uh, 30 seconds. I'm gonna have to get some water because my throat is um, is is super dry.
All right, back, back. This is this is really fun. This is really fun. So if you're new to the cryptocurrency space, you have to ever take everything a bit lighthearted. Um, don't take anything emotionally. Um, otherwise, you get wrecked. Um, that's in in those moments when the price dumps, you know if you're over leveraged in the space. If you've got too much investment in the space, um, yeah. Definitely leave some likes. I don't think we've got enough likes on the video at the moment. We've got a few likes, 70 likes. Let's get it to 100 likes. 100 likes would be fantastic. Really, really um, make a difference. That would be awesome. And I think your likes are also helping with the chart. As you realize, we had a massive pump after you place, like you smashed that like button, the, the price went up. All right. Oh man, so I think now the, the gem from this video they can take, if you don't already have an account on Kraken and you want to maybe anticipate such a drop now, of course, you never really know when that happens and you've got like maybe a few thousand dollars, you can try and place some buy orders for, for Eve, for Ada and so at super low levels and you might get lucky for the next time. Dot was $15. I mean, $15 is, is not too bad. It's only like half of the current price. Um, this is like really crazy. That's nearly like an 80% correction. Elva, is this possibly the end of the bull market or is it just a correction? Me personally, I don't think it's the end of the bull run. Um, it's just a, a minor correction. And I think if you are scared with the current price action, it's always important to zoom out. And as you can see, like we're way in the bull run. Let's go back to EFUSD. As you can see, we're in the bull run. This is just like a minor, minor correction, something to be expected uh, in the, in the grand scheme of things. If you believe in the fundamentals, then you know what's up. And I think many people get shaken out because they don't truly understand the true the, the the potential behind most of these projects. And that's why I, why I'm trying to educate you guys, trying to share the fundamentals behind the, the the projects. It's not only the the price that's important. I think the price is very often secondary. I mean, of course, everyone wants to, want to make some money in the market, but. Um, What's super important is what we're actually trying to achieve in the cryptocurrency space. That's breaking away from institutions, breaking away um, from from regulations, uh, from uh, basically governments and institutions that don't really have the best interest of the retail investor in their mind. I mean, you can become your own VC, you can participate in new projects, you can invest, you can trade without having to ask permission. Ethereum, Polkadot, Cardano, and so on are massive foundations for a growing DeFi space that will allow people to participate in financial services without asking for permission. If you've already heard of the, the term accredited investor, well, for all of the lucrative deals out there in the traditional financial world, you have to be an accredited investor to participate. Now in the DeFi space, someone de develops a new project with a smart contract and so on. You can just like buy it on Uniswap. You can buy and participate in ICO. You don't really have to ask for permission. And I think this is the beauty of the space. And when you realize that these small market fluctuations, they just like roll off you without causing any emotional fear. In my opinion, you guys are early. It's, Definitely possible that we get a bigger correction, but if you hold longer term, then um, you're, you're gonna you're gonna be prosperous in the space. Extra Madura, Kakeris. It is not the end of the bull run, N neither correction. It is a free fall, has, has no consolidated support. It's scattered without having a floor. To be honest, this look at this small dip. This doesn't really look like a free fall. 
and there are a lot of support areas um in my opinion that's just fud um but yeah if you believe that i still hope that you thrive in the market superman has turned green on the hour that's that's great let's look at the hourly chart look massive massive volume if you green on hourly back at $1,726. So now the support is $1,721. This is gonna be interesting, 20, 20 minutes left. Um, it would be great if this candle also turned green. If this candle here turns green, then I'm um, gonna see um, a push back upwards and that would be the end of the, 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 the small correction that we had. While I think the institutions that bought Bitcoin will sell soon, they don't tend to do long-term investments. They invest a lot, most of the time, short-term. Um, let me disagree with you. And the reason why I'm disagreeing with you is, first of all, what other opportunities do massive institutions have for their cash? At the moment, they really don't really have that many other opportunities. I mean, they could go into commodities, but yeah, gold and silver are not that interesting at the moment. Um, they could go into stocks, but stocks are overextended. And just keeping it cash is really terrible because having cash on your um, books doesn't really look good for investors because this cash is just losing in value. So in my opinion, institutions, they're buying it for the long term. I mean, you've got Michael Saylor with MicroStrategy. He's buying ETH. Uh, be, no, no, if he's buying BTC long term, he's definitely not selling at these prices. He actually um, issued some new um, notary bonds um, to raise more capital to buy like 1 billion US dollars more crypto. That's probably why the market dipped because he's he's, he's anticipating a, a correction and maybe sold a bit to buy lower. Never, never know. But in my opinion, I don't think the institutions are selling anytime soon. Thoughts on Polkadot and Kusama? Yeah, I think that's great. I'm looking forward to the DeFi space um, thriving on those platforms. I mean, Kusama is basically the cousin of Polkadot. Um, if Kusama does well, then Polkadot also does well. Yeah, I'm not following XRP too much at the moment. I have no clue. I, I read something about it should happen in, in June, July or not earlier than then. So for me, until then, it's 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 a pass. Let me actually quickly look what happened to XRP USD during this correction. Um, it, it actually went pretty well. It went down to, to 50 cents, um, 49 cents. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. It's true. They might be hyping it, but you have to understand for, for institutions to buy and sell, it's really complicated. They have to do ODC sell. I mean, I mean, Tesla selling 1.5 billion US dollars of um, BTC is not an easy thing to do. They have to go onto the OTC market. You're going to have to find sellers. Uh, no, sorry. You're going to have to find buyers for your BTC. And that is a, is a long process. So I don't think they're gonna do that after they just bought a month ago. It's possible that I'm wrong, but as, as I've seen how complicated the OTC process is, I don't think they'll be selling anytime soon. Um, the cost of acquiring those, those Bitcoin um, is probably pretty high. Not talking about the price of BTC, but like man hours, getting lawyers involved, SEC and stuff like that. It just makes no sense to, to, to sell one month later.
Luca or Clemo, do you think it's a good idea to invest in them now or should I be waiting for a big dip? I mean, you've got your dip right now. Um, it was very fast dip, very difficult to catch, but it just happened. Uh, I, I believe you're just talking about the the whole cryptocurrency market, not a particular coin. If you're talking about a particular coin, do let me know uh, which one. So yeah, I will be closing the stream now as uh, it's been going on for quite a while. And um, yeah, got any last questions? Do let me know. Is Uniswap worth to buy? It went up quite a lot. Question is, why do you want to buy it? Um, I think Uniswap is a fantastic exchange. I, I already sold all my Uniswap. Yeah. All right, guys. Catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.